Welcome to the Beacon Podcast. Dipper Jane East and Ari Kopel are voices in the wilderness for positive change and a better future. Thank you for listening. And now, here are your hosts. Hello, everyone. My name is Deborah Jane East, and my co-host is best-selling author Ari Koppel. Good afternoon or good morning whenever you listen to this podcast. And that's what I love about doing it, because you can fit this into your schedule. I am guilty of listening to podcasts at all hours of the day and night. How about you, Ari? I do that all the time. It's like you said, you fit it into your schedule. It's awesome. Right. And if you're bored or something, you can always find something of interest. And every once in a while, you really latch onto the juicy stuff. And before you know it, it's daylight. So <laughs> it's it's really great. That's why I love the format for our show. But yeah. I first would like to say thanks to everybody who supported our last podcast. It was our highest rated show so far. And if you would please like and subscribe if you will, because it's totally free. It helps us get the word out there. And that's why we do this. We want to be a voice. So our topic today is censorship and the silencing of the voices of everyone. So what is censorship? Okay. It is the practice of restricting or manipulating access to information and ideas on the internet or in public by governments, corporations, or other powerful actors. Online censorship can violate the right to freedom of expression and information and threaten democracy, human rights, and social progress. So first of all, and I know you know the answer to this, so I'm going to ask you, who Uh-oh. is targeted in censorship, Ari? Who's targeted? Mm-hmm. Anybody telling the truth? <laughs> <laughs> See, I knew you would know that. It's and, terrible, uh, isn't it? It is. Yeah, it's the American people. And I'm sure all other people, you know, other countries, it's parents, it's businesses, it's doctors, political opponents, people who complain about an injustice that... They want to keep it hidden so they will say you're telling a lie. Exactly. I'm going to try not to use one of those trigger words, but I think the first time we realized we were being censored was when we had the big event where we had to shelter in place and millions of people were affected. Do you want to talk about that and all the things they did to shut us up? Oh, yeah. I mean, this is uh, something... That was obviously planned. Um, A lot of people may not know this. They may think that this thing just happened to have happened, you know, uh, automatically through nature. And uh, I mean, at least that's the story that is being told. But, you know, if a person were to really dig a little deeper, they would see that there's there's a lot of patents uh, that were taken out uh, for this particular situation um, to manipulate a certain event that happened during that time frame. Uh, and I'm trying to be very careful here, Deborah, because what we're talking about, I want to make sure, you know, the subject matter, I want to make sure that we're not a target of it because of the subject matter we're talking about. There's certain trigger words that I'm trying to be careful, um, you know, and I'm avoiding them on purpose. So I'm hoping that the audience can keep up, you know. Um, Do you want to tell right quick what experience you had with this and why you're trying to be so careful? Because it (laughs) has something to do with our last show that you put on YouTube. Exactly. And so YouTube is very famous for uh, censorship. Uh, You know, I believe it's, uh, if I'm not mistaken, and I believe I'm correct here, it's owned by Google. Uh, and Google is famous for doing that. Um, Twitter used to be famous for doing that too until Elon Musk, but then still uh, Elon Musk uh, took over and there's still some sort of censorship because I'm still being censored there as well. But what happened to me was I our last show, which apparently has done very, very well, um, I, I uploaded it to YouTube because I have a huge following there and it wasn't not even a day. Uh, it was a matter of hours. Let's put it, it didn't hit 24 hours. 
it was removed. It was a flag that was removed. I was given a strike. Uh, you're, you're given a total of three strikes and then the, your whole channel is taken down. I mean, all your work, all your videos, all your interviews, everything. There are people that I know of that, that have millions of followers or subscribers in their channel and that's gone. You know, they, oh, they wow. three strikes and gone. All that work gone for nothing. So if you don't back it up with other, uh, you know, platforms like Rumble and BitChute and Odyssey and other platforms, your stuff is gone. So what happened to me was that I uploaded our last show. And apparently, and I think I was the one that was guilty uh, for saying certain trigger words, right? Because, you know, there are certain algorithms and the, their AI is actually going through and doing this word crawler thing where they're picking out certain words that are not allowed because they want only a certain type of information to get out to the public and no other point of view can be brought up even if it's brought up by doctors even it's a, if it's uh, brought up by scientists or you know or you know just leaders and great thinkers no they they're all, the only scientists that are allowed to you know give their point of view are the ones that are pushing a certain narrative a certain agenda so what happened was i said a certain word or two and or, or talked about a certain subject matter, which is what you just asked me about, uh, a certain event that happened during 2019, 2020, 2021. That thing that happened to everybody uh, is has to be talked about in a way that promotes their agenda and it can't not be against it. And so I think I spoke against it and therefore, boom, I'm out. So I have one strike on me and I was um, not allowed to post for a whole week. At the same token, I also had a video that I personally created uh, about global warming, uh, whether it was, you know, truth or fiction. And I really didn't narrate a lot of it. I just put a compilation of different scientists and, and people that are, you know, knowledgeable about this subject matter. And it was flagged for the purpose of demonetization because one of the speakers said that uh, CO2 uh, is supposed to be good for the environment and what? we need more and we need more of it. And oh. they, they, they didn't think that that was correct because CO2 is bad. It, it creates warming. And so, yeah, that was bad enough to, uh, to tr you know, trigger something and get me uh, demonetized for that particular um, video. So, yeah. So that's what happened to me. And it had, it's happening to a lot of people. Look, it's happening to Russell Brand right now. I He's know. being demonetized. Yeah. I was He's waiting for demonized. it because he has really, he turned a door in his life. And, you know, he was always quite liberal, but mm -hmm. he sees the truth and he's been reporting on that and he makes no apologies. And what happened? Just what they're doing to President Trump. Yep. And it's yeah, sad they because you have to worry about retaliation. Oh, Yeah. Yeah, they oh, for sure. And, and and the whole point is, remember, I come from a communist country. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm uh, I'm Cuban born and my family fled communism. And at the very beginning of it, when Castro was coming in and doing his stuff and 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 creating havoc in that island, uh, what was happening is that you, you could a person could not talk against the regime they couldn't and so they had um co-workers ratting on on co-workers neighbors ratting on neighbors family members ratting on family members and you were either for the regime or you weren't and if you weren't you would be imprisoned uh so the censorship is the very uh one of the first clues that that's what's happening in this country and they don't want the other point of view because they don't want people waking up and, you know, possibly rising up, uh, marching, protesting, uh, going against, you know, what their, uh, you know, whatever the directive is. Uh, they don't want that. They want people to comply like good little sheep. And they don't want other sheep to tell them, hey, there's a fence there, uh, by the way, and uh, you're you're a captive. They don't want that. 
They want everybody to think that, you know, it's good to be a sheep and the pastor is good and we'll take care of you as a government and that type of thing. So that's what's happening. And um, again, that's why censorship is very important when you have a tyrannical type of government because they want to be able to control everything, the narrative, the the agenda, everything. So, I mean, they had the hospitals count yes. traffic fatalities as deaths. Correct. I had my doctors actually tell that to me in person when they worked in the emergency room, that even if it wasn't from that, it was a car wreck or something else, they were told to put it down as a, a fatality. I mean, that is a form of censorship because they're not letting the truth get out there. Yeah. And then on top of that, they're putting out mistruths, right? They're putting out skewed and warped type of information to to create a a sense of fear right because if if the numbers are extremely high it's like is what i mentioned in our last show is that during that time frame um numbers were blown out of proportion to show that the situation was grave uh with the situation in maui they were report they were under reporting the numbers to to make it look like it wasn't a big deal like it was a big deal but it wasn't the fatalities weren't that many you see so it all depends on how they need to manipulate the numbers and the data so that uh, you know it serves their their narrative well and there's many ways that they do this i mean they have organizations like the center for disease control the fda They have Mm -hmm. a whole conglomerate of agencies they use to censor. Do you remember when the FDA called an approved drug that Americans have been using for years that was suggested to help and they called it horse paste? Yes. And they made (laughs) fun of people. And then all of Mm -hmm. a sudden doctors could not prescribe that or they would take their license away. Correct. Correct. And that's what they did. And uh, it was sad because other countries didn't have that censorship. Right. And and they were using the horse paste. And apparently a lot of them either got cured or just never got it. Right. India, their incidence of that virus was so low. Their government actually sent out some of that medication, which I won't mention because in case it is a trigger word. (laughs) <laughs> they sent out that medication to every single person. And you know what it cost them? $2.32. Amazing. Now, in America, and you were in the hospital, it was thousands and thousands of dollars to the pharmaceuticals, to the hospitals. I mean, it, it was a huge cost. And plus, think of all the poor workers, like the nurses and just saw the overtime. I mean, it was it was horrible. the The full toll, I don't think, has yet been recognized monetarily yet. I agree. Yeah, they, it it was a big money maker for big pharma, and uh, a lot of apparently uh, people in Congress. And I don't know. It's it's a pretty high percentage of the people in Congress that um, somehow had either gotten paid by big pharma or were invested in big pharma somehow during that time frame. And they made a killing uh, with the, uh, you know, the, the stuff that went into a person's arm, that type of thing. They made a lot of money uh, investing in that. So yeah, it's, it's kind of wonder, I kind of wonder why, uh, you know, we even have any trust, you know, in the people that we supposedly vote in, right to represent us i i don't i don't i think they're all well i don't know about all but a very high majority of them are compromised truly it it really is i have a feeling a a uni party i I don't think we have two parties to choose from and so that's why we see a lot of these so-called republicans dragging their feet and just uh having a theater uh as if they're you know uh some type of um what do you have when they have those hearings? You know, um, it, it's just theater. They, nothing really results from that. Have you no. found anything resulting from that? Because nothing no. has resulted. Yeah. Well, it's I theater. watched um, 
I watched yesterday the Senate Intel Committee interview Mayorkas, and they were interviewing oh. him about what he was doing about the border. And, uh, you know, he's the Homeland Security Secretary. And every question they asked him, Ari, as many of them was just a yes and no answer. Mm -hmm. He never answered. No. He he would not say that. He would do a, what I call a runaround. Sure. They just he like would, the question. Right. He yeah. would totally walk around it and mm -hmm. not give a definitive answer because mostly, I think probably 99% of the questions they asked him, he was guilty of. Of course. And so that's how he censored the truth by acting like he didn't know or he couldn't remember. Well, and you know, the, the, the funny part is, and, and I'm sorry to interrupt, but, um, you know, there is this thing called body language and how mm -hmm. to be able to read a person. And it's just common sense. I mean, if, if even a person just by experience, by life experience, you kind of can tell when a person's lying to you, well, at least I can, um, you know, and when they are, uh, you know, dodging the question or sugarcoating it or deflecting it or spinning it around, you know, that kind of thing, you're, you're answering my question. You know, you're basically, if I ask you a question and you're not answering it with a yes or no or, or with specifics, uh, and you're dodging around it and playing around with it. Well, I have a feeling you've already answered it. Uh, and, and then uh, at that point, you know, I would have to, uh, you know, explore it a little further, you know, and and even, you know, maybe even take a lie detecting test and I have a feeling all these people, uh, you know, they're trained, you know, yes. on how to lie. Boy, I tell you, and you know, and you know what gets me? The fact that they do these things under oath. Right. I mean, my goodness, if they don't believe in, in God, what, what, what's the point? Right. Under oath to whom? You know, I always wonder when did they sign up for the class on how to get out of That's the right. truth? Cause they That's all right. took that class. That's right. That's right. They did. Yeah. They all know how to do it. And yeah. I, I remember once uh, I had to go to court with a client cause you know, I'm a social worker, retired social worker and the evidence was uh, against my client, you know, was pretty extensive. And what um, his lawyer said was, when they ask you a question, give everything except the answer. Take <laughs> up the time so the judge will get annoyed and uh, or the other attorney will change the subject, but try not to answer the question. So, yeah, they have all these lawyers at the White House. I know that I've heard uh, Sleepy Joe has 25 lawyers, you yeah. know, because his impeachment starts the 28th of this month, I believe. Well, that's going to be a circus. I oh, can tell you yes. That. <laughs> and, you know, the thing about it is his dementia is so bad. Sometimes he tells the truth and he don't mean to. I know. I mean, after our show about uh, the last topic. He came out and said it. He said it. Unbelievable. In and you found it I where did. he admitted. He said, we'll have to have to do this more often or something. <laughs> but he named what he did. And I thought. But he I does it all the time. That. And yeah. I want you I want the audience to realize something because I was going to do that in in one of the videos and in the actual video with respect to the global warming thing that I did. Mm -hmm. I wanted to put in uh, how this man lies and you can tell when he's lying every time or it's not just that he's lying but he it has something to do with uh pushing the new world order agenda mm -hmm. and notice that when he does something like that he touches his face it's almost like he's trying to hide okay oh, notice wow, it. that's very insightful i'm going to keep my eyes open definitely for definitely notice it because i was actually going to put it in a little um like a little ribbon or something on the actual video. Hey, take a look at the fact that he's al always touching his face. Every time he has to mention something that is, um, has to do with pain or, or sadness or tragedy and, or, or some event that he's trying to push, like uh, maybe gun control, maybe transgenderism, anything like that. Notice that he will touch his face and he will either rub his eye 
or his nose or something. It's almost like a subconscious thing that he does to try to hide or separate himself from the news that he has to give. Yeah. Wow. That is really uh, incredible. Mm -hmm. And I understand. I've watched those shows before where investigators will interview someone and they'll say, look how he's holding his hands. He's twiddling his thumbs. He's got nervous energy because he's not being truthful. I mean, they have all these markers that they can look at when they interview people. And that helps them understand the direction of questioning they need to go to find out the truth. But his body language, I tell you, Uh I mean, it's right there for everybody. I mean, all other countries know something's not right with him. He walks off without finishing interviews. He says he's going to go to bed. He <laughs> yeah. uh, he forgets to shake people's hand or he doesn't know where he's going. He always has to ask direction. Yeah. And then he relates everything to some incident that happened to him, which right. usually backfires because look at the Maui interview. Yeah. He connected what happened to all those families, all those all those houses burned to a little kitchen fire he had, yeah, which yeah. is nothing and greatly offended those people. But yeah, he he is a good study case. They'll probably use him <laughs> years yeah. from now. Yeah, and, uh, he's, he's an learning. embarrassment. I mean, imagine this is the leader of the free world. Holy cow. We're, we're in trouble. And, and maybe that should tell you we're not a free world anymore. We're not a free country anymore. No. That, that should be the indicator right there. I mean, this is the man at the helm. Holy cow. Are we oh, in I trouble know. or what? And yeah. the governments, the corporations and other people like Hollywood, they have developed new technologies and strategies to monitor and filter, to block to distort or remove information that challenges their interests and agendas. And what struck me is when it leaked that uh, Schumer told Twitter before Elon took it over that uh, like specific reporters or things like that were talking about the Hunter Biden laptop story Mm -hmm. and that they, that they should block them. And that they should limit their stuff. They would, people in the White House and in the government, mostly the Democrats, were instructing Twitter which people to censor, shut up, and to delete their accounts. Yeah. Even Nancy Pelosi. I mean, and was it successful? Yes. Because they took President Trump. They blocked him from being on there. And he had more followers than anybody at the time. Wow. And they have they have other ways, you know, behind the scenes. I know that uh, I think it was Zuckerberg who testified that the FBI told him that they had a hundred percent proof that the Russia hoax was true, and that he should monitor that evidence. And whenever that came up that it should be censored on Facebook. And, and you know, what are you going to do if it's the FBI? So exactly. they use these government agencies to fulfill their censorship, and they still do it. Yeah. They still they, do it. They're saying that the uh, that Facebook is, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I just heard that a couple of nights ago, Um I believe it's one of the CIA projects or it's owned by the CIA or something like that. So it's infiltrated by the CIA. So basically the CIA has total control of Facebook and everything you're putting in there, uh, everything you've written, uh, posted, um, Mm -hmm. all that. um, Yeah, they're they're on top of it. They know exactly who is doing what, what, who's saying what, you know, and um, so, of course, Zuckerberg is going to be, uh, you know, the face of Facebook, right? But uh, it, behind the scenes, it's really the CIA. Oh, so yeah, it is. <laughs> and that is what is so concerning to me, because now this has happened to me, and I'm sure it has to you. Censorship can also be in the form of websites not being available. 
Exactly. Uh, social media platforms like shutting down or doing weird things. Like, mm -hmm. what was it? A couple of weeks ago, I had sent you three or four messages and you'd never received them. Exactly. Even yep. though I opened up my messenger and they were right there. I mean, Amazing. I could see where I wrote them. So but... you you never knew that I never got it. Right. And then you're wondering, gosh, I wonder why Ari's not responding to me. Right, right. <laughs> and, you know, and that, that's, that is bizarre. There's a, there is a uh, video, I believe I sent you, where this uh, Pastor Begley, uh, what's his name? Paul Begley is interviewing Mike from around the world. Uh -huh. And so I took that video because I I never know when they're going to, you know, take down a video. They're going to censor somebody's video and the video, the information in the video is very, very important. So I'll download it and then I'll put it up in Rumble. OK, and so I did that and then I gave credit in, in you know, I, I added the website for Mike from around the world. Mike from around the world is the gentleman who Paul Begley was interviewing who has amazing information about the stuff that's going on i think he was talking about a possible imminent nuke uh, event oh yes i did right? listen to that it was a great interview it was a great one right so i put in um his website so people can follow him too well i went ahead and i thank goodness i did this i went into his website and talking about how things are manipulated in the CIA or whomever the powers that be are, are meddling into everything. When you go into that website, it automatically sends you into some kind of a porn site. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. it, it automatically forwards. So this poor man, you know, he thinks that his website is fine and it's not. It's going to some other website that has nothing to do with him. Redirect. And on top of that, it's the grid. It redirected it to someplace else. So that kind of gives a person, oh, this guy is not legit. Oh, this guy, you know, is into porn or whatever. It, it gives you a bad taste in your mouth so that you're not going to, uh, you know, maybe check out his information so that you can become more aware and more, you know, in tune to what's really going on. Right. That's what's yeah. happening. They can yeah. hijack anybody's account and redirect it to something else. And the other thing is they make deals with Internet service providers. Have you ever had something super important like a show you wanted to do or you were getting talking to a person and messenger and it was information about something that was going to be a good show or information you hadn't heard before? And all of a sudden, boom, you have yeah. no Internet anymore. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. And you'll try all evening and you can't get on. That's right. Right. They do this in areas. I've noticed like when you remember all the train crashes we had like a oh, yes. couple of years ago and it were toxic fumes and investigations. They did this a whole lot in those areas. They cut out the Internet so people couldn't hear what was going on. And they still do that. They've done that many times in California or other states. And they did it a lot when the election was going on. That was one of their favorite techniques to knock out the Internet. Yep, absolutely. And you yeah. know what this reminds me of, Ari? China. China, because they block access to thousands of websites exactly. and services that they say are politically sensitive or what they deem is socially harmful. I mean, they monitor their people with the iron hand. I mean, can you imagine, you know, not being able to look at just about everything? And let's see, it is North Korea, I believe. Is that where Kim Jong-un yes. lives? Mm -hmm. They can't have internet at all, I don't think. Unbelievable. Even Cuba has internet, for goodness sakes. Wow. I'm, a, I'm, I'm of the thinking right now. I, I am not even kidding you. I, I comment this with my family all the time. I'm saying things are going to get so critically bizarre and weird and bad here in the United States that I'm seriously considering going back to my home country. I am not even kidding you. I am thinking that even that Cuba, as bad as it is, and people are people eat 
the 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 mop cloth the cloth that they use to mop the floors oh wow you i'm not even kidding i know people who actually have done this they uh, they will boil it to make it soft and they'll put condiments on it and that's what they eat they, oh. there's nothing to eat okay it's not the Cuba that the tourists see. The tourists go in and they see, you know, the, the Tropicana and the, the bars and whatever, you know, the, the pretty beaches. But no, the people that live there, okay, they really have nothing to eat. And so they'll eat something like that. I'm willing to go there. Okay, that should tell wow. you what I'm picking up, okay, that is coming down here. Because what we're talking here is what is in charge more than likely is in charge of this whole agenda, New World Order 2030 agenda thing. I have a feeling it's some kind of an alien AI technology type of thing that has absolutely no conscience at all, no heart, no soul, nothing. And they're able to to dictate policies and things that it, it doesn't matter. You know, you're expendable in order to get it done. You see, yeah. so I would rather go to a Cuba where I already know what kind of regime it is and then than to live something like this. I, I, I'm not even kidding you. So, well, not knowing exactly who all the good and bad guys are. That's I mean, look thing. at the rhinos in the Republican Party, mm -hmm. you know, bit by bit, they're revealing their self. Exactly. And they're coming out and um, they put them there as spies. But notice it's not just a uh, you know a few. We're talking about a lot of them, right? Are rhinos, and these are the ones that are preventing a lot of the good policies from being put through, right? Right. They're 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 the ones that are pushing back on all of this. They're actually on the side of the Democrats, and you know the ones that are supposedly good, they're very soft. Right. They're, they're not pushing. They're, they're not aggressive enough. They're not strong enough. They don't have the backbone to stand up and, you know, stand their ground and, and say no. I think the only one right now that is possibly doing that, uh, putting a little pressure on the um, on. Gosh, I forget it. I mean, I forgot his name, but Matt Gates is the only one that's doing right, that right now. Right. Yeah, on Kevin McCarthy is what I was. Saying. Right. Well, I'll tell you one person that never hid anything, and I always knew she was a rhino, is Liz Cheney. <laughs> right. She was just everything against oh, Trump, and I thought, you're not even hiding it, woman. Mm -mm. And you wonder why you didn't win your reelection? Yeah. Because you showed your true colors. Yeah. You know, so it's not 100%. There's always good and bad in every political party. Sure. But, you know, you can see, you know, they're, um, you can see what they have on their mind by the way they vote. I'll like John you. Kerry, you know, yes, look at him. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, here's here's one way to, like, kind of figure out who's doing what and why. Um, these senators don't really make a lot. I mean, they make a lot more than, of course, maybe people like maybe you and I. Um, but they don't make a heck of a lot but a lot of these people are filthy rich yes and how did that happen in other words you know how many bribes and you know payments and whatever insider they, trading exact insider trading uh, trading and things like you know uh the stuff that goes in people's arms that kind of stuff y you just it's unbelievable because you know they can they they're in a power position and when somebody needs a favor hey what's a, a couple of hundred thousand here and there you right. know and i do believe this is why my orcus lies all the time he has received incentives or he has had things sent his way to line his pockets and i'm not yeah. afraid to say that yeah there's many of them that have have done that i mean i look at schumer i look at shifty shift all of these if you deep down study everything and, and maxine waters let me not forget her because her daughter is receiving millions of dollars for security wow and uh so there's all kinds of things like that it's usually tied into one of their family members now, where does that sound familiar? Look at the Biden administration. Mm -hmm. They've yeah. even got their grandchildren getting money. It's always somebody they know or connected to the political party 
or a relative or a cousin. And that's how they keep it all under wraps is yeah. they have the blackmail stuff. So they have to, they have to lie because my orcas has to know he looked like such a fool up there. I mean, yeah, everybody but you, but, knew it. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. He looks like a fool. He could care less. Right. Uh, you, you know, because, um, you, you know, it, it's for the, the greater good, right? Whatever that means, right? It's for right. the greater good. So he's going to, yeah, he'll be the fall guy. He'll be up there, you know, look like a fool. Uh, as long as he doesn't, you know, divulge anything, as long as he doesn't confess or admit anything, um, then, you know, hey, he did his job. He gets his bonus, you know. Uh, it, it's it's horrible, but it, the truth of the matter is that this country uh, is in bed with China. Yes, there really is no question about that. I mean, just take a look and follow the money, follow uh, follow the agendas that are happening in this country. Look at take a look at they're mirroring everything that is happening in China, and they just they they were the role model. Now we're 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 following you know suit. They're bringing in thousands upon thousands of people through the border and a lot of them are just men um single men you know you're telling me oh these are families that are running away right. from poverty and and you know they are seeking asylum and but they're not they're they're men they're they're young fighting age men and a lot of them happen to be also chinese so that kind of like puts a little bit of a you know mm, worrisome it's a little right. worrisome right? and some of these are human traffickers they're drug dealers right. yep. uh they are rioters you know you hear about this all the time that there's an ad in a paper uh that they will pay for protesters and they'll name the location and exactly they'll pay you money they need actors in this and sure. these um illegal aliens that come through the border They'll do it. They don't care. Yeah. They're not invested in this country. I mean, look at what's happening in New York right now. Even the New Yorkers are coming out and saying, hey, you took all of these people. You took our children out of their school and you're putting migrants in it. Yep. And where are our children going to go to school? Or they put them in homeless shelters for veterans. And I, that's just, I just can't even begin to say how disheartening that is to me. These veterans who suffer from what they did, you know, their injuries, the PTSD from homelessness, from um, not being able to get the health services they need. And then it's turned over to people that haven't even lived in the United States, who have none of the moral values of an American citizen. That really, really infuriates me. Yeah. And no wonder all the people in Texas and all those places down there who get it, that they they get it first. They get oh, yeah. the migrants first and, and they're, they have no choice. They God send them to them, the I mean. sanctuary cities. They want it to be a sanctuary city. And the the ones that have been up there they gave them rooms and they put them in fancy uh motels and stuff and what happened they wrecked the places they trafficked they did drugs they got into fights they ordered exorbitant food <laughs> they oh, yeah. ate better than you and I ever eat Ari. <laughs> <laughs> or most of americans well because... i'm gonna have to like i said i'm gonna have to leave the country <laughs> go to Cu go to cuba then go then from there go to mexico and then come up you know go go into the texas border area and come in right and they'll hand you papers, all this stuff yeah and, and i'll get a nice you know bonus i'll get a phone i'll get you know clean clothes uh you know uh yeah all the benefits Dude. Food, food uh, and you'll money. You'll get a ticket to any any state that you want to go. Any place I want to go. I mean, my goodness, uh, probably uh, great health benefits. You know, yeah. all that. Uh, yeah, it's it's very it's just very concerning what's happening in 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 this country, and and it it is falling apart, guys. I mean, just, you've got to be blind or dead not to see it, and 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 it has nothing 
to do with the party, whether it's the Democrat or it's the Republican, it's all the same thing because somehow they're all working together because if right, there was really order. two part if there was really two parties, then one of them would have to step up and say, hey, you know, s- somebody is being committing treason here. It, we, we've got to do something because our rights are being eroded right now. You know, the exactly. Constitution is out the window, but nothing is happening. So therefore, they're all in bed together. They're all working. They're just pretending to 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 be against each other, but they're not, um, you know, and it is what it is. It, it, this is where we're, we are right now. So I always ask, well, what are we going to do about it? Is there anything right. that's going to be done about it? Because writing at this point, writing a congressman, inundating Congress people with letters, uh, I think we're already beyond that point. We're, we're, we're done I with think that. so too. To think that we're going to have an election. Hey, if you don't correct this, we're going to get you out of office. We're going to vote you out of office. They don't care because in my opinion, and many people have the same opinion. We don't think there might be another election. Right. You know, because I mean, that, they did that's it, a serious thought, but it, it may be it. true. Think about it. They've, they've been stealing elections. You think it just happened in 2020? It did not. No. This has been happening for a while. And they've did it in Venezuela and they've done it. And they, they recently, um, what did they do? They assassinated uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the head of, um, candidate and i can't remember what country it was if it was ecuador one of these countries they assassinated him he was like a trump type of person okay he was the conservative side yeah and they could they assassinated him look what happened in brazil i mean these people are taking over they're just trying to put their own type of people in every single country so when the moment comes everybody's new world order it's just one one world government you're everywhere. exactly right because they're synchronized when these mm-hmm. black lives matter riots started it wasn't just in the US it was all over the world and Amazing. the thing that pushed it forward was the journalists the newspapers the media, because every one of them, for instance, like when there was violence going on in a city from Black Lives Matter people, I remember seeing this one reporter saying, yes, there's protests going on, but it's mostly peaceful. And what was going on in the background? They were throwing pipe (laughs) bombs and there was fire and explosions. He was reading from a script. Well, you know, and or maybe he was smoking the big one. I don't know. Maybe that was peaceful to him. I don't know. You know, I mean, what's peaceful to somebody may be violent to somebody else. I, you know, it, it could be that, too. But you're right. They, they do read from a script and it's usually given by the higher ups who are pushing that narrative. Right. And uh, yeah, this is um, it, it, it. They're pushing that. Do, are you familiar with some of the the. Um, the mission goals for the new world order, the which is another word or another term for the UN uh, agenda 21 and 2030. Are you familiar with some of them? Not all of them. Do you know them? I do. I can read them to you if you want. Oh, please do. Okay. This is interesting, people. So please pay attention. So they want a one world government like we all kind of know. Uh, they want one world cashless currency. I think they're pushing for that digital thing, uh, central bank digital digital currency, so that they have total control of everything. How, how you spend your money, and if you don't behave well, you know, I guess you don't get to spend. Um, they have the one world central bank, which is uh, another thing they want. They want wor- one world military. Uh, they want the end of national sovereignty, which is obviously what's happening in the border right now, right? right. Because if you don't have a border, you don't really have a nation. Um, the end of all privately owned property. So they want, obviously, nobody to own farms. They don't want suburbs. They want everybody confined in some kind of, uh, well, they're talking about that 15-minute city. It could be a 20-minute city, but everybody, it's like walking driving distance can only be 15 minutes uh everybody in one place so that if they need to shut it down they shut it down and that's it hey you're a bad remember the hunger games yeah your sector is a bad sector you're not following directions so boom you know they kill the switch and then nobody gets anything um but anyway that that would be part of it um the end of the family unit 
Oh, I know that is a big thing to that's them. A We've big one. seen that. Yeah, that's a big one. Uh, depopulation, control of population growth and population density. Um, that's a big one. Mandatory, uh, you know, things, pokes in the arm for everybody. Mandatory. Mm -hmm. Universal basic income. Uh, microchipped society for purchasing travel, tracking and controlling. Implementation of a world social credit system like China. So that again, you don't you're you're talking against the regime like maybe we are right now. Mm -hmm. We would not be able to probably buy milk and maybe get gas and that type of thing. Um, let's see, the trillions of appliances hooked into the 5G monitoring system. So that it's gonna be it's gonna be plugged into the internet of things. So again, you you're not behaving, they can unplug your appliances, they unplug your, your electricity with those smart meters that you're putting. Uh, govern government raised children. They're doing that oh, now. They they're do doing that, that in now. China for sure. Well, they're doing it in the way that they're bringing in all these what uh, transsexual or uh, what do you call those? I, I kind of the drag queens. Thank you. Trans Last time you couldn't remember. <laughs> I couldn't remember today. The drag queens. The drag queen stories. They're trying to indoctrinate the children. Put in very strange pornographic type of books in their libraries. They're indoctrinating um, government owned and controlled schools, colleges, universities. Of course, you know, all these uh, teachers and even college professors are extremely woke right now. And they're following a Marxist agenda, a Marxist type of script. Um, the end of private transportation, owning cars. That's going to be a no, no. Right. They're right. pushing that thing because of the global warming type of thing. All businesses owned by government and corporations. So they're doing that now where they're trying to uh, federalize grocery stores. And I don't remember if I read it, if it's in the UK or where it was that they're trying to do this. But that's coming to a neighborhood near you. Wow. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, the end of irrigation. They don't want you to use water because they want conservation. Uh, mm -hmm. The end of private farms and grazing livestock. Of course, we know that's going to be out the door because, hey, we don't want methane gas because of the global warming. Uh, the end of single family homes. Like I said, yes, nobody can own anything. You're going to no own zero and you're going to be very happy because if you're not happy, then you know what? We're going to take off uh, X amount of digital currency from your wallet. You're not going to be able to buy milk for your kids. Right. Restricted land use that's, uh, that serves human needs. So they're going to obviously restrict land and the ban of natural non-synthetic drugs and naturopathic medicines like vitamins and that type of thing. So this is just a gist of it. It's a little snapshot of part of their mission and um, and the goals that they're trying to attain. So, well, what really upsets me is, you know, part part of all of this, you know, with the crops and the food, you know, they're trying to push us to eat insects and bugs mm -hmm. and um, geoengineered food that they have, you know, created in a Petri dish. And they're already putting it in foods unbeknownst to a lot of people, unless you exactly. look at the label. Yeah. I found it in my own pantry. <laughs> I mean, what it's was it? What was that? What was that bug that you told me about that they're doing some kind of a milk? Um... Oh, I remember what it's called. It's called Into Milk. That's E N T O in my L K. And it's a dairy alternative made from insects. They say it's full of nutrients and environmentally friendly to farm and produce. And hey, if you work in the store or the factory, you'll be fired if you see one crawling on your arm and you knock it off because that's product. Ew. They squish right. the roaches. <laughs> I mean, I thought, no, I don't want this. <sighs> I, I don't want bug milk. I'm sorry. Exactly. I, I don't I don't like bugs. I mean, I like butterflies and things like that, but I'm not going to go eat a butterfly. It looks like a, you can milk just about anything these days. Oh, well, it's just really <laughs> it's really disgusting. But, you know, the thing is, they've got all of these networks that support their censorship. They manipulate the textbooks, the curriculum so that it will guide people towards their communist agenda. It is not only censorship and a violation of our right to freedom of expression, but it is a threat to democracy and human rights. 
I mean, that's that's what they want is total control. Yeah. And if we don't fight that control, if we just stand back and don't do anything and don't complain, I mean, we got to raise awareness, educate the public, which is what we're trying to do, and stand up. I mean, you can learn ways to be undetected, you know, go to platforms and stuff like BitChute and Rumble. So far, people are rarely ever censored on there. I think if you said, well, hey, I want to kill all this kind of people (laughs) yeah that deserves to get censored anywhere but you have a right to express your ideas and things like that so there are ways that you can protect yourself online have you ever used a vpn which is a virtual private network ari you know i have not um i am hearing though through the grapevine and uh correct me if i'm wrong maybe you don't know either but um i know that they were putting out rumors that anybody who has a VPN would uh, would be either fined and or arrested. And, mm-hmm. I, you know, at, of course, at, we're not at that point yet, but that's the rumor of something that might be coming down the pike. Have mm-hmm. you heard that? Haven't heard that yet. Okay. But when I first got a VPN, it was uh, Dan Bongino was using it. Oh, sure. Yeah. But, but I can certainly see where they would do that because mm-hmm. that would just ruin their day, wouldn't it? Of course. Of it course. would be raining on their parade. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm sure they'll do that because China and these other countries that are censoring so heavily, you know, I'm sure that's a crime in their country. Exactly. Yeah. But we really have to be concerned. You know, when I see the amount of censorship that went on, what they did about the January 6th event, Mm -hmm. and they censored the videos, they um, they took them off of YouTube. YouTube got rid of them. They were all sent to the Democrats and they edited some of them to make it support their narrative to use against president trump yeah and but fortunately they have ways to find out if it's been edited and stuff but they use that to fake their story because what it showed is it showed there were undercover agents there there were police officers that opened gates there were peaceful protests on the inside a lot of things and that detracted from their narrative and so they took them all down from youtube so that's one thing i do if i find a video that i like really good i immediately download and save it because eventually they're going to get rid of it exactly yeah and i do the same and it's just a backup for whomever uh, that, uh, that person who put it up on their channel, you know, if that thing goes down, then somebody else should have it and somebody else should have it because it's the only evidence we have, you know, that, you know, things are being discussed and, and brought to light. They don't want, they're shooting it down. They don't want that information to come out. That's the reason they're shooting it down. Uh, but somebody else needs to, to, you know, hold that torch and pass that torch forward uh, because it's, again, it's his, first of all, it's history. You know, they're getting rid of all kinds of history. And if something happens that it's just totally devastating, there's, you know, they're going to rewrite history the way they want to. They, you notice that our history books have totally changed. Our, to- our history has changed because they're changing it. You right. know, they're, they're on purpose doing that. They don't want people really to know the truth about our past or anything. Right. Um, So we've got to download just for posterity's sake, just for grandchildren. And we have to remember censorship all is connected to our God given first amendment rights. Correct. So what are those rights? The first amendment provides that Congress make no law respecting an establishment of a religion or prohibiting its free exercise. It protects freedom of speech, the press, assembly, which means we, like, remember when all the truckers were protesting Mm -hmm. in Canada? They tried to take that right away from them, even though they were doing it peacefully. They would force the crowd to disperse, and they actually attacked some people. I remember one officer on a horse 
trampled a woman in a wheelchair. Oh, my God. They also arrested some of them. They ordered them off the street when it should have been protected. They took their, locked down some of their checking accounts so that they couldn't get any gas. So their rights were violated. And that's what's happening to Americans and to people worldwide in many different ways. So we're going to have to be mindful of how we do things um, and how we put our information out there. Go to these other platforms, like I mentioned, uh, BitChute, Rumble, Truth Social. I've put our shows on there and haven't had any trouble so far. It's not saying right. that I won't ever, but right, right. continue to get the word out there, please like and subscribe to our shows so that you can have the truth download our shows hey save them one day you'll look back and say oh my gosh the truth was there all along yeah and i didn't listen i mean i found that out about myself things that you know 9 11 i thought oh that's not true but hey It was true. It was, unfortunately. It was, yeah, because some things are just so shocking. You just, it's more than your mind can wrap around. But yeah, yeah. Our time is gone. Yeah, don't forget, uh, folks, before you um, wrap up, um, I I also put it up on YouTube. Uh, I will do my very best to scrub anything that might be uh, a trigger so that it remains on YouTube. But if, you do go to YouTube and my channel's gone, then please go to Rumble because it's the identical same thing. Um, and I also have shatteringthematrix.com where uh, you can go in and learn about all these things without any censorship. Uh, it's not, it's almost like a social media like Facebook, uh, but uh, you're not going to get censored there. So you can get a lot of up-to-date uh, information about what's happening in the matrix and uh, you know about the new world order and how to escape it how to get out of it so anyway um, I, I invite you all to join as well right and if you've learned anything from this show is that censorship is now being used as a weapon so they can control the narrative yep. well that doesn't have to happen we can be informed educated And we can do our own part. All of you, all of us, we can be a voice in the wilderness. That's what we like to think of because this is a wilderness that we live in. Some (laughs) days it's worse than others, but the wild, wild west. Right. (laughs) So please like our Facebook page, the Beacon Podcast. And uh, both me and Ari will put all of our other platforms, you know, that we're on. Also, Aries best selling books are listed below with their link on Amazon. Let me tell you, she gives you tools to educate yourself by being empowered. And it's very important because when we get caught up in a problem, sometimes we're in limbo. Yeah, we're in limbo yeah. and we don't do nothing. So hey, get some tools to to sure. help uh, get yourself going again. For sure. So thanks, everybody, for listening. Ari, thank you so much for all of your information. And please check out her YouTube channel. Absolutely. So we'll see you again in a couple of weeks. Thank you for making our day by supporting us. I hope you all have a great weekend, and we'll be back soon. Take care. Good night. You have been listening to Dipper Jane East and Ari Copel on the Beacon Podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to Rumble, BitChute, and YouTube to catch our next episode.